All right. Uh, hello, everyone, and uh, happy new year. Happy new year. First of all, I want to uh, apologize. Uh, I originally set this for 7.30. And uh, well, as they say, life comes at you fast and things change and things are fluid. Uh, so I had the choice of either trying to do this later uh, at night or uh, doing a double header on Saturday. Uh, right now I'm scheduled to um, have a talk with uh, two other content creators on my original channel on Saturday at uh, 3.30, 4 o'clock. And uh, doing double headers can be very time consuming. So um, knowing that I might have to run out later on here, I decided to just course correct and get the stream in now. Now, I have some things I want to read. I have some things that I want to share. Uh, if I don't get to everything tonight, well, I can, I'll, I'll do a follow-up. The, the beauty of video is that if you don't get something the first time, you can always uh, edit or uh, you could always uh, do a, a follow-up installment. Uh, I see two folks here now. Uh, please let me know who's here. Let me know um, uh, who's there. Shout yourselves out. Let me make sure that uh, I can see myself. And I'm going to make an announcement over on my original channel. Let's see. I hope you all are having a, a good new year so far. CR Frank. Oh, CR Frank, thank you for being here. And thank you for posting my uh, Cash App and PayPal. I appreciate that, everyone. Uh, I don't have AdSense over here. I don't have um, a super chat. So uh, all I have is my Cash App and PayPal. So if you want to donate something, uh, if, if I say something that you find particularly useful, uh, please feel free to throw something there in the collection plate. Okay. So, uh, yep, I see the, the live icon. Let me make an announcement over on the original Big Discussions 76 channel. And uh, then we'll get this interesting discussion going. I'll give it a like over there. Okay. All right, uh, that has been shared over there. I'm going to play the intro and then I will uh, jump in. So I'll see you guys on the other side. Uh, CR Frank is here. Whoever else is here, please uh, shout yourselves out. Let me know who's there uh, and let's make this interactive. I'll see you on the other side of the intro.
All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, Happy New Year and welcome back to Big Discussions 76, Science and uh, Technology. Please like the stream. Please share uh, if you see fit and uh, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, CR Frank was gracious enough to post my cash app and PayPal there. So if you want to donate something during this stream or after the stream, uh, my cash app and PayPal are actually below uh, in the description box. So um, today we're going to talk about uh, freezing eggs. We're going to do some reproductive uh, biology and I guess in a way, some technology as well. You know, it's funny as I was watching as I was watching that intro, I have to, to update it. Uh, I was watching my interview with Dr. Patrick Dix on automation uh, with my mother uh, over Christmas. And that intro, it looks different on the YouTube side than when you're watching it here from the backstage. So I have to update that. It seems to go a little faster on the YouTube side. But um, it, it was, uh, I hope you all had a good holiday. Uh, I watched a lot of science content over the holidays, uh, particularly in the areas of uh, climate change and, um, well, climate change. Uh, and I'm, I'm fascinated by that. That's a whole um, subculture and sub world uh, in itself. And I will be venturing into uh, that area this year. Uh, so look out for that. We're going to talk about climate. We're going to talk about what's happening with the the, the earth and, and the water and, and, and the globe and everything. Um, and there's a, a content creator, that, uh, not a content creator, a scientist uh, named Dr. Willie Soon, who is one of the, um, he'd be labeled a climate denier. So he's a scientist uh, who is not so convinced that uh, the earth is uh, becoming terribly warm because of carbon dioxide and the other things that the, the pro-climate change people believe in. But I'm saying this to say, I'm bringing him up to say that one, in one of his videos, he pointed out that science uh, is about information. It's about the data. So it's not about your feelings. It's not about uh, your how you feel. It's not about uh, your bias or your particular inclination, science is about what the data shows and what the data tell us. So always remember that. Always go where the data goes with, and always go, go with what the data shows. Okay. So this is gonna be more, um, and when I get into climate, that's gonna, we're gonna look at data. Uh, and, and so, but this is gonna be more science reporting and science news. So let's talk about freezing eggs. Let's do some reproductive biology. So I, I, I became intrigued by this because over the last couple of years, this is a topic like several others that has bubbled to the surface, freezing eggs, uh, women freezing eggs. So this is gonna be about the science. I'm not gonna get into all of the social uh, aspects of it. That has uh, been talked about and it's being talked about ad nauseum on other channels. So I'm not gonna get into whether it's right or whether it's wrong or uh, if this is destroying communities or not. I'm not gonna get into that. I'm just gonna try to focus on the science. What I will say is that things have changed. Uh, if you look on my wall, well, you can't see back there, but back there, there's a picture of uh, my mother and her siblings. Uh, well, most of her siblings, that's a different story. And my grandmother, my grandmother had eight children. Uh, and years ago, uh, it was it was normal for uh, women to have children earlier in their birth cycles, okay? Uh, and then with uh, the coming and the advent, I think advent's the right word, of um, women's rights and women's empowerment, and I'm not saying that's wrong, um, having children by a particular age, that started to compete with career and education and personal ambition. But there are also some other dynamics 
um, that led to children being had later on or children being had at all. There are other things that led to that, other social dynamics. Um, and, and one would argue that altered uh, family dynamics uh, have played a role in that. Uh, some would argue that uh, altered uh, dating dynamics uh, had a, uh, a role in that. But however you want to approach it, or whatever you want to say, this is a big thing now, and it's probably going to get more prevalent as the years go on. So um, a woman freezing her eggs for use for later on. I just hit my flask. That's what that was, that ringing noise. All right, so I, um, instead of just jumping right into uh, these articles, let's do a little bit of review. Let's do a little bit of reproductive biology 101, and then I'll jump in. And again, if I don't finish everything today, then I'll just do a, uh, a follow-up uh, on another stream or another pre-record. Okay, so you all know that uh, you know we're human beings, okay? Uh, we are multicellular organisms, uh, and each of us uh, is composed of billions and billions and billions of uh, animal cells, which are shown in this uh, pretty picture here that I borrowed from Google. We're all made up of billions and billions and billions of specialized animal cells. Uh, each of those cells has uh, 46 chromosomes. Well, where do those come from? Uh, well, uh, humans are, are born and bred sexually. So there's a, uh, a mother and a father. Well, for now, there's a mother and a father, uh, each contributing uh, a cell of their own, a sperm cell and an egg cell. Uh, and so cells divide either by uh, mitosis or meiosis, just briefly. Um, mitosis is a form of cell division in which you start with 46 chromosomes and the resulting cells have 46 chromosomes. Okay, meiosis uh, is a form of cell division in which you start with 46 chromosomes and the sex cells, the sperm, or the eggs uh, end up with 23 chromosomes. And once that sperm and that egg join, the number 46 is uh, restored. Okay, and then division occurs, the cells start to specialize, you get, a, you get an embryo, and then you get a fetus, and then, you know, over the course of nine months, the course of three trimesters, the ba a baby starts to form and become fully functional inside the womb of the mother. And we know that uh, women have a, uh, a reproductive cycle, ages 13 to uh, 49, uh, but I think medicine says that it's better if currently if a woman has her, her children earlier in that cycle. Okay, that's the way it used to be. Now, uh, in many instances, women are waiting uh, later and later. Uh, so let's read about why they're waiting later and later, and let's read about this new option that they have for waiting uh, later and later in their birth cycles, in their reproductive cycles. So I have some articles here, I have some pictures, uh, and again, if I don't get through everything, then I will do a follow up. Okay, so this article is entitled Freezing Eggs, Preserving Fertility for the Future. And this was written by uh, Dr. Uh, Chantel Cross. Okay, this was published uh, it doesn't say. Well, this is from uh, Hopkins Medicine, so I'm assuming this is from the Johns Hopkins University Medical System, which is not too shabby. Okay. And this reads as follows. Many women want to have children someday. But what if you haven't found the right partner? need more time to establish a career, 
want to accomplish other life goals or are facing a medical procedure that could impact your fertility. Freezing your eggs uh, is an option that may help you realize your dream of motherhood when you are ready. Okay, so the first time I heard of uh, freezing eggs uh, was from a, a coworker who developed, uh, I believe it was breast cancer. So, as you as you'll as we'll discover together, um, if a woman of reproductive age is about to go through chemotherapy or radiation, one strategy is to remove uh, the eggs. So they're not exposed to the chemotherapy or radiation. So you're, that's an, an instance of removing the eggs and storing them for later use. And fortunately, that coworker beat the breast cancer. Okay. Having your eggs extracted and stored for future use, uh, parentheses called cryopreservation, may give you the best chance of conceiving later on, especially if you're facing a medical treatment such as chemotherapy, treatment of severe endometriosis, or gender-affirming surgery, or a health condition such as an autoimmune disease that can affect fertility. So who was good for egg? Who was good for freezing eggs? Whether or not uh, freezing eggs is a good option for you depends on a few different factors that you need to discuss with your doctor. For example, if you've uh, been diagnosed with cancer, your eligibility for egg freezing may depend on what type of cancer it is uh, and if you'll have time to complete the fertility preservation process before cancer treatment begins. But for many women, the biggest factor to consider is their biological clock. In medical terms, this means that the number of eggs you have and the quality of those eggs both decrease as you get older, um, eventually, uh, you stop ovulating, that is releasing eggs from your ovaries for potential fertilization, when you reach menopause, commonly between ages 45 and 55 years. Age is the most important factor in successful egg freezing. Your egg supply starts to decline more rapidly around age 37, says Chantel Cross, MD, a reproductive endocrinologist and fertility specialist with the Johns Hopkins Fertility Center, at Johns Hopkins uh, Healthcare and Surgery Center, Green Spring Station in Lutherville, Maryland. By 43, 90% of a woman's eggs are abnormal, which means they don't have uh, the potential for pregnancy. Women who freeze their eggs before age 40 have a greater likelihood of achieving pregnancy with those eggs in the future. But a reproductive endocrinologist uh, or an infertility specialist can provide testing to see if you're a good candidate. Freezing eggs after the age of 40 is typically is not typically recommended, but may be considered on a case by case basis. What is the process to freeze eggs? While egg freezing is a uh, multi-step process, it's a lot more straightforward than you may think. It's the, it's the exact same process as for in vitro fertilization, says Cross. The only difference is that after egg retrieval, we store the eggs rather than fertilizing them. Here's what you can expect. You self-inject uh, two to three hormone medications every day for 10 to 12 days. A friend or a partner can help with this if necessary. This encourages a group of uh, eggs to develop at the same time. To track the development of the eggs during uh, this period, you also have uh, four to six pelvic ultrasounds and frequent blood work. Once those eggs have matured, you undergo an ultrasound guided surgical procedure to re retrieve them. The outpatient procedure takes 20 to 30 minutes under anesthesia. An embryologist, a person trained to examine eggs and embryos, will verify that the eggs are mature, which means they have the potential to become fertilized. 
So side effects of egg freezing. Uh, while side effects are common, uh, they are usually uh, not severe and are uh, a result of the natural elevation of hormone levels that occurs with uh, ovary stimulation. These may include mood swings, hot flashes, headaches, nausea, uh, and after the retrieval procedure, some women uh, may have bloating, cramping, or mild pain. Where are the eggs stored? Uh, after eggs are harvested, they go through uh, vitrification, a method of quickly putting eggs into a deep freeze. They're stored in liquid nitrogen tanks in an embryology lab. A good embryology lab has the following. Around the clock monitoring systems with alarms to ensure equipment is properly functioning and uh, the correct temperature is maintained. Manual uh, checking temperatures. Embryologists who oversee lab operations and lead embryologist and a lead embryologist with a certification as a high complexity clinical laboratory director. Uh, certification by clinical laboratory improvement amendments, a government agency that regulates all laboratory testing. Okay, so what happens when you want to use your eggs? So you've frozen them and now you want to unthaw them. When you're ready to use the eggs, a group of them are thawed and fertilized with sperm from your uh, partner or donor. We generally recommend intracytoplasmic sperm injection to fertilize eggs because we found uh, natural methods of fertilization aren't as successful once the eggs have previously been frozen, says Cross. Wondering how long you can keep uh, eggs frozen? Egg freezing has only recently become more widespread, so there isn't enough data to indicate if there's a limit on how long uh, eggs can stay in liquid nitrogen and remain viable. However, we've been freezing embryos for a long time. We've had pregnancies from embryos <clears throat> that were frozen for more than 10 years, cross reports. We assume that eggs would behave similarly if frozen. Okay, so this is a picture uh, depicting intracytoplasmic sperm injection. For those of you who've never seen it, she, you're still here. I appreciate it. Okay, this is a picture of intra. Uh, let me go back. Intracytoplasmic sperm injection. This is a picture right here. All right, so now you can uh, tell your friends and family that you know what intracytoplasmic sperm injection is. So this picture looks like, I was I was studying this, it looks like they're injecting one sperm in there. I don't know how they can do that, how they can go down to one single sperm, um, or maybe that's just for this particular uh, illustration. Okay, so now let's talk about the money. And this might be the part, a sheet that you, you'll probably be interested in. And, and it might come up on our talk on uh, Saturday. How much does this procedure cost? Since insurance coverage and fertility center fees vary, it's best to check with your infertility specialist and your health insurance company about out-of-pocket expenses. The total cost generally covers medication, uh, ultrasounds, blood work, egg retrieval, the egg retrieval procedure, uh, and the egg freezing process. Help with egg freezing fees. If you uh, have a cancer diagnosis or other medical or another medical condition that affects fertility, you may be able to receive more financial coverage than you think. Some states require uh, insurance companies to pay for fertility preservation when there's a cancer diagnosis that's cross also. Uh, there are grants available for cancer patients who need help covering the cost of egg freezing. Don't assume it's not an option for you. At least come in and talk to a, a fertility specialist about what's possible in those circumstances. So they, they didn't give a quote 
in terms of a dollar amount in this piece. But fear not, I have some other pieces here that actually give those monetary values. Okay, I'm gonna take a sip here. And as I'm reading this, if you're watching on the playback, uh, just think about, yeah, think about how much something like this uh, would cost someone or cost a couple. Um, yeah. A lot of people don't know that this is going on. So this next piece is going to be from the Mayo Clinic. Or the Mayo Clinic. All right. And this is another short one. If you're just coming in, please hit that like button. Uh, I think Sheet is still hanging out. Whoever's here, uh, please shout yourselves out in the chat. Let me know what you think. If you're watching on the playback, please hit that like button. And if you want to donate something to the channel, that information is here. And it's in the description box below as well. Okay. This is another short piece. Egg freezing, also known as mature oocyte cryopreservation, is a method used to save a woman's ability to get pregnant in the future. Eggs harvested from your ovaries are frozen, unfertilized, and stored for later use. A frozen egg can be thawed, combined with sperm in a lab, and implanted in your uterus, also known as in vitro fertilization. Your doctor can help you understand how egg freezing works, the potential risks, uh, and whether this method of fertility preservation is right for you based on your needs and reproductive history. So why it's done? We keep coming back to this. Why is it done? Why would someone need this procedure? Egg freezing might be an option if you're not ready to become pregnant now, but want to try to make sure you can get pregnant later. Okay. I'm going to credit, um, there are times when I peek in on uh, Chantel Simone's channel. Um, and she was talking about this recently. So there are times when I peek in there uh, to see what she's talking about. And this is a big deal right now. So, um, I thought it would be cool to cover the science behind it. If you're just coming in, hit that like button. The likes are free. If you want to donate something to the channel, uh, that information is here. All right. Let me keep going. Egg freezing might be an option if you're not ready to become pregnant now, but want to try to make sure you can get pregnant later. Unlike uh, with fertilized uh, egg freezing, or um, unlike with fertilized egg freezing or embryo cryopreservation, egg freezing doesn't require sperm because the eggs aren't fertilized before they're frozen. Uh, just as with embryo freezing, however, You'll need to use fertility drugs to make sure, or sorry, to make you ov ovulate so that you'll uh, produce multiple eggs for retrieval. You might consider egg freezing if you have a condition or circumstance that can affect your fertility. These might include uh, sickle cell anemia, autoimmune disease such as lupus, and gender di diversity such as being transgender. You need a uh, treatment for cancer or another illness uh, that can affect your ability to get pregnant. Certain medical treatments such as uh, radiation or chemotherapy can harm your fertility. Egg freezing before treatment might enable you to have uh, biological children later. So just like I said, I had a coworker who uh, developed breast cancer and uh, she freezed her eggs. She beat the breast cancer and she had her second child. So that was my first time hearing about uh, freezing eggs. Hello, uh, Chris, always good to see you. Thank you for stopping through. All right, 
you're undergoing in vitro fertilization. When undergoing in vitro fertilization, some people prefer egg freezing uh, to embryo freezing for religious or ethical reasons. Or finally, you wish to preserve younger eggs now for future use. Freezing eggs at a younger age might help you get pregnant when you're ready. Okay, I think they talk about that some more here. You can use your frozen eggs to try to conceive a child with sperm from a partner or a sperm donor. A donor can be known or anonymous. The embryo can also be implanted in the uterus of another person to carry the pregnancy. Okay, so these are the risks. Conditions related to uh, the use of fertility drugs. Rarely uh, use of injectable fertility drugs, such as synthetic follicle stimulating hormone or a luteinizing hormone to induce ovulation can cause your ovaries to become swollen and painful soon after ovulation or uh, egg retrieval. Uh, ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. Signs and symptoms include abdominal pain, bloating, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Even rarer is the possibility of developing a more severe form of the syndrome that can be life-threatening. Uh, so egg retrieval procedure uh, complications. Rarely uh, use of, the, uh, of an aspirating needle to retrieve eggs causes bleeding, infection, or damage to uh, the bowel, bladder, or a blood vessel. Uh, emotional risks. Egg freezing can provide hope for a future pregnancy, but there's no guarantee of success. If you use your uh, frozen eggs to have a child, the risk of uh, miscarriage will be primarily based on your age at the time your eggs were frozen. Older women have higher miscarriage rates, mainly due to having older eggs. Research to date has been shown an increase in the risk of birth defects for babies born as a result of egg freezing. However, uh, more research is needed on the safety of egg freezing. I'm gonna stop here uh, and I'm gonna show a picture of the uh, aspiration because it looks like they use a device to aspirate or it's a way of vacuuming, but th they're, using, they're using an aspirator to pull the eggs out. So I'm gonna show a picture here and I'm going to hydrate. Yeah, here's the picture right here. That's a picture of the, um, actually, no, that's an ultrasound probe. It looks like they're pulling them out with a, a needle of uh, some sort. All right. You have questions or comments, let me know there in the chat. How uh, you prepare. If you're considering freezing your eggs, look for the fertility clinic with expertise in the field. Experts are commonly known as reproductive endocrinologists. Uh, the Center for uh, Disease Control and Prevention and the Society for Assisted Reproductive Technology provide information online about U.S. fertility clinics, pregnancy, and live birth rates. Although data related to pregnancies using frozen eggs is limited. Keep in mind, however, that a clinic's success rate depends on many factors, such as the ages of the women it treats. Um, if the expense of egg freezing concerns you, ask for information about the costs associated with each step of the procedure and the annual storage fees before beginning the egg freezing process, you'll likely have some screening of uh, blood tests, including uh, ovarian uh, reserve, ovarian reserve testing to determine uh, the quantity and quality of your eggs. Your doctor might test the concentration of follicle stimulating hormone and estradiol in your blood on day three of your menstrual cycle. Our results can help predict how your ovaries will respond to the fertility medication. Another blood test and ultrasound of the ovaries might be used to get a more complete picture of ovarian function. Uh, and then finally, infectious disease screening. You'll be screened for certain infectious diseases such as HIV 
and hepatitis B and C. So what you can expect. Uh, egg freezing has multiple steps, uh, ovarian stimulation and egg retrieval and freezing. So that's where I took this picture from. Okay. All right. K Business Podcast. Oh, hey, Kay, how you doing? Thank you for stopping through. All right. Ovarian stimulation. You'll take, a, you'll take synthetic hormones to stimulate your ovaries to produce multiple eggs uh, rather than uh, the single egg that typically develops monthly. Medications that might be needed include medications for ovarian stimulation. You might inject medications such as uh, philotropin alpha or beta or uh, menotropins, uh, medications to prevent premature ovulation. Your doctor might prescribe an injectable uh, gonadotropin releasing hormone agonist, such as uh, luproline acetate or gonadotropin releasing hormone antagonist uh, or a gonadotropin releasing hormone antagonist, such as cetrorelix. During treatment, your doctor will monitor you. You'll have uh, you'll have blood tests to measure your response to ovarian stimulation medications. Estrogen levels typically increase as follicles develop and progesterone levels remain low until after ovulation. Follow-up visits will also include having vaginal ultrasound, a procedure that uses sound waves to create an image of the inside of your ovaries to monitor the, the, the development of fluid-filled sacs where eggs mature, the follicles. When uh, the follicles are ready for egg retrieval, generally 10 to 14 days, injection of human uh, chorionic gonadotropin uh, or another medication can help the eggs mature. Okay. Egg retrieval is done under sedation, typically in your doctor's office or clinic. A common approach is trans uh, vaginal ultrasound aspiration, during which an ultrasound probe is inserted into your vagina to identify the follicles. A needle is then guided uh, through the vagina and into the follicle. A suction device connected to the needle is used to remove the egg from the follicle. Uh, multiple eggs can be removed and studies show that the more eggs retrieved up to 15 per cycle, the better the chances of birth. After egg retrieval, you might have cramping, feelings, or a fullness of pressure might continue for weeks because your ovaries remain enlarged. So once again, this is a picture of the retrieval right here. All right, this one is almost done. I have two more. I'm not going to read the entire third and fourth pieces, but there are uh, parts of those that I might jump to, and then I'll wrap this up. Let me know what you think in the chat there. Uh, is this all stuff you knew? This is not stuff that I knew. Uh, do you know someone who has frozen their eggs? Do you know why they did it? Do you have opinions, opinions or thoughts on any of this? Okay. Shortly after your unfertilized eggs are, are harvested, they're cooled to sub-zero temperatures to preserve them for future use. The makeup of an unfertilized eggs, I'm sorry, the makeup of an unfertilized egg, egg makes it a bit more difficult to freeze uh, and lead to successful pregnancy than does the makeup of a fertilized uh, egg. The process uh, most commonly used for, for, for egg freezing is called vitrification. High concentrations of substances that uh, help prevent ice crystals from forming during the freezing process are used with rapid cooling. Okay. Typically, you can resume normal activities within a week of egg retrieval. Avoid unprotected sex to prevent an unintended pregnancy. Contact your healthcare provider if you have a 
fever higher than 101.5, severe abdominal pain, uh, weight gain of more than two pounds, heavy vaginal bleeding, or difficulty urinating. Okay, this is the ending of this one. When you want to use your frozen eggs, they'll be thawed, fertilized with the sperm in a lab and implanted in your gestational carrier's uterus. Your healthcare team might recommend using a uh, fertilization technique called intracytoplasmic sperm injection. Uh, in uh, ICSI, a single healthy sperm is injected directly into each mature egg. The chances of becoming pregnant after implantation are roughly 30 to 60%, depending on your age at the time of egg freezing. The older you are at the time of egg freezing, the lower the likelihood that you'll have a live birth in the future. Okay, so they do, they can inject one sperm uh, into the egg. I don't know how they do that, uh, but they are able to do that. Okay. So I'm almost done here. How much does this cost? Give me one second because I do have that information queued up. How much does this procedure cost? Okay. Okay, I'm going to bring this up. Yeah. So this is uh, this piece is also below in the comment section. So if you're thinking about doing this, this is how much the bill will be. Is this uh, an elitist thing? How much does the procedure cost? At most centers, the egg retrieval procedure costs about $10,000. And that doesn't include the drugs, which alone can range from $3,000 to $5,000. I'm going to read that again. At most centers, uh, the egg retrieval procedure costs about $10,000, and that doesn't include uh, the drugs, which alone can range from $3,000 to $5,000. So over on, um, I told you all that sometimes I, I peek in and I look at other channels. Well, one is uh, Chantel's. Uh, she did quote that figure, $13,000 uh, to get the egg out, get the eggs out of freezing and then to use them. So that's about 13 to $15,000. Some people will have their medication covered by insurance companies and some will not uh, because it's considered uh, an elective procedure. Cold storage costs from uh, $500 to $1,000 in annual fees. And when you're ready to use the eggs, they must be thawed and fertilized to prepare for the IVF process. Each round of IVF costs somewhere between uh, $3,500 and $5,000. So, so you're looking at um, $20,000 to unthaw the eggs and then to get them ready for use. And then you don't even know if the entire thing is going to work. This is interesting. So for now, without insurance coverage, it's a rich person's game. With no guarantees on how long the eggs will be viable, freezing eggs isn't always a financially or medical or medically sound choice. Let me start that over because I, I'll probably clip this and upload pieces. With no guarantee on how long the eggs will be viable, freezing eggs isn't always a financially or medically sound choice, especially when women don't know when or if they will want to use them. It's better to freeze eggs when 
women are young and healthy, uh, but a woman in her 20s should carefully consider the costs and risks, Pfeiffer said. Egg production starts declining after 35, Pfeiffer said. So a woman in her late 30s or 40s may need to go through the hormone treatments and collection cycles several times. And not all the eggs will be good. Among women over 40, about 15% of the eggs produced will be normal, Pfeiffer said. Many doctors recommend freezing about 20 eggs. These cycles are not cheap. You have to think about an individual going through this four times to store up to 20 eggs. Uh, and Richards pointed out that in certain markets, costs are declining, making this procedure more accessible. Some clinics now offer package deals where they'll lower the price if you do three or more rounds of egg retrieval. There are some markets offering it for as low as $4,000. When I froze my eggs, it cost 13,000. So that's a big difference, Richard said. And at the moment, there is some theoretical talk about parents gifting egg freezing to law school graduates. In reality, when parents know more about egg freezing, it will become more common to have that conversation. Okay. Chaos Rain has entered the building. I'm almost done. Chaos comes in as I'm finishing. <laughs> What's good, Dr. Dunbar? Hey, Chaos. Chris says, I know some people who have done it due to health concerns like cancer and fibroids uh, having their ovaries removed or, or a partial hysterectomy. Thank you for sharing that. I'm checking my phone for something. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to read this last piece uh, in its entirety. It's a long piece and I've already read a lot. I'm sure people are tired of hearing me read. For those of you watching live or if you're watching on the playback, I hope you're learning something. Uh, I, other than hearing about this on YouTube and from a coworker who uh, is a breast cancer survivor, uh, I had never heard of this and I didn't really know anything about this, but I'm learning a lot right now. Okay, so the final piece. The final piece, I'm going to read one subsection and then I'll wrap up. But the intro is funny. Okay. The intro is funny. Chaos Rain. I don't have a super chat on this channel, I don't have AdSense over here. There's one metric that I need. And it's the hardest metric for this subject matter. It's hard to get that metric with this subject matter. So I don't, I don't, well, I, I won't say it here, but no. Uh, if anyone wants to make a donation over here, you have to use um, my Cash App or PayPal if you see fit to do so. Okay, so this article, I was a little bit, um, tickled by this opening because it's very, it's very PC, okay? It's very woke, it's very, well, it's very PC and it's very woke. So it reads as follows, and I'm gonna jump to uh, where I was. The opening of this piece says, this is, this is entitled The Egg Freezing Process Step-by-Step and this is by uh, Tamika Zor, uh, MD. I think I pronounced that properly. And Sarah Derivish, Derivish Jacobs. I don't know if I pronounced that properly. But the opening paragraph says, people with ovaries <laughs> are uh, increasingly spending their 20s and 30s moving up the career ladder or uh, achieving financial stability. So notice uh, they wrote uh, people and not women or ladies. So 
Um, what did uh? Yeah, that's right. A uh, Corey Bush from I think she's from Missouri. She referred to women women as uh, birthing people. So I I thought that was funny. That's just me. Maybe you guys didn't find that funny. But I thought it was funny. Uh, really, Chris says. A family in the UK used a 30-year-old frozen egg and resulted in a viable live pregnancy. Okay, there you go. So you could use, um, I don't know if any of you have been near liquid nitrogen. It's very, very cold. So apparently liquid nitrogen is sufficient to preserve an egg for fertilization uh, 30 years later. Okay. And all of these links are in the description box below. In case you all want to take a look for yourself and read up on this yourself. Okay, so I'm going to skip down to this subsection. I'm going to go over this diagram here to wrap up because I screenshotted that diagram. But this subsection says what are the success rates? Because, you know, birthing people birthing people want to know what the odds are when they go in the front door to get this done okay so this reads as follows what are the success rates for egg freezing if you're just coming in please hit that like button the likes are free and they certainly help with the engagement okay what are the success rates because ovarian uh, reserve uh, changes with age, the expected number of eggs retrieved changes with age too. It's important though to note that just like with any other aspects of health, there's variation between people when it comes to the number of eggs you have as you age. While some people may experience steep declines in egg quantity, that decline may be more gradual for others. In one 2017 study, I'm sorry, one 2017 study looked at 520 people um, who had undergone egg retrieval and found that for ages 36 and under, about 14 mature eggs on average were retrieved. For ages 37 to 39, about 10 mature eggs on average were retrieved. For ages 40 to 42, about nine mature eggs on average were retrieved. And for ages 43 and above, about seven mature eggs on average were retrieved. Is there a best number when it comes to egg retrieval? No, but there are some guidelines about how many frozen eggs, I'm sorry, about how many frozen eggs are needed for a good chance of a live birth later on. According to uh, the uh, American Society for Reproductive Medicine, if someone freezes one single egg, the chances of that single egg resulting in a live birth later on are between 2% and 12%. Freezing more eggs, either through one retrieval or through additional rounds, increases those chances. Someone younger than 35 has a 70% chance of a live birth if they freeze nine or more mature eggs. People in their early 40s may need to freeze significantly more eggs, uh, 28 or more, for the same 70% chance of, live, of a live birth. Uh, spring fertility has an egg freezing calculator. <laughs> based on two published studies that allows you to input your age and number of mature uh, frozen eggs to get an estimate uh, of your probability of one birth versus two or more live births from those eggs. This tool may be helpful if you're deciding on whether you'll do one round of egg freezing or whether you may need additional cycles. Okay. I'm gonna read this last, this last section. I'm gonna review the costs again, and then I'm gonna wrap this up. Okay. So what about a best age for freezing your eggs? 
one 2015 study created uh, a decision and now I'm sorry one 2015 study created decision analysis models of egg freezing at different ages to figure out this very answer with special attention to when egg freezing was the most beneficial for increasing the probability of live births. When comparing people who froze their eggs to those who didn't, here's what the study's authors found. The greatest improvement in probability of live birth was seen in 37-year-olds who tried to conceive seven years later. 51, uh, 6, there was a 51.6% chance of a live birth in a 44-year-old who froze their eggs when they were 37. And there was a 21.9% uh, chance in 44-year-olds who never froze their eggs and tried to conceive without treatment at 44. The highest overall live birth rates were in people who froze their eggs before they were 34. The authors also made a handy dandy tool so that you can actually see what these numbers could look like for you. Ultimately, the younger you are when you freeze your eggs, the better your future outcomes as egg quantity, the quality will be better, said Dr. Zori, or is it Dr. Zori? I don't know. However, we must balance the age at which you freeze your eggs with the likelihood that you may actually need to use them, which is where studies are helpful. Okay. More people came in. If you're just coming in, please hit that like button. Uh, the likes are free. If you're new, uh, please uh, subscribe. If you want to donate something to the channel, my cash app and PayPal are there. I don't have AdSense or a super chat over on this channel yet. Okay, I'm going to go over the costs one more time. And then I will um, show the diagram from that article. And then I will uh, wrap this stream up. So I can have some dinner. All right. So, um, I'll read this first paragraph. Dr. Zori says, uh, the exact price of egg freezing varies depending on your clinic and region, but the price range of the procedure alone is usually between $5,000 and $10,000 per cycle. When considering the costs of injections and fertility medications, the price of one egg freezing cycle goes up to around $10,000 to $12,000. This price usually includes one year of storage for your eggs. The price of long-term storage facilitates, I'm sorry, the price of long-term storage facilities or independent storage facilities is about $500 to $1,000 annually. Embryo creation and uh, IVF treatments are closer to uh, $8,000 to $12,000 because the process requires more work in the embryology lab. Okay, so I'm gonna stop this here. All four of those articles are below in the description box. Okay, I lifted this diagram Where is it? There it is. Yeah. I lifted this diagram uh, from this paper. So let's just go over it really quickly and then I will wrap up. So what are some of the general trends here? Well, the reasons for doing this could be the woman may, might have breast cancer or some other uh, disease state where she may have to undergo treatment or take medication that would harm her eggs. So in that instance, she might say, okay, well, I have breast cancer. I'm, I'm going to do chemo or radiation. I don't want my eggs damaged. 
I'm going to freeze them for later use. Okay. And then you have some women uh, or some birthing people who are uh, that much into their careers where they don't want to stop or compromise their career for childbearing at this time. And then maybe you have uh, a woman or women who don't have a partner or don't have the partner that they want. Okay, so those are all reasons why uh, a woman may elect to do this. In terms of the cost, well, there's a, before I get to the cost, there's a hormone treatment okay, to get the, the eggs production ramped up. There's an extraction uh, procedure. Uh, there's the freezing, there's the unfreezing, and then there's a, a specific way in which the eggs are fertilized with a, um, uh, a needle, okay? The costs on average, from what I've read, the costs range from 10,000 to $20,000. So you have to have money. Uh, if your insurance isn't going to cover this, you have to have money to do this. Okay. And it seems to be, based upon what I read, the earlier a woman harvests her eggs, the better. That's going to impact the outcome. So the earlier she harvests her eggs, the better the chance for um, a fertilization later on. Okay, so let's go over this diagram, then I'll wrap up. Do I even have the diagram queued up? I don't see the diagram here. Let me see if I can find it. In the meantime, in the meantime, for those of you who've never worked in a biology lab, this is a, uh, a nice picture of liquid nitrogen. Let's see, give me a second here. I'm looking for it, I'm looking for it. Uh... Bear with me. There it is. All right, we're just gonna go over this really quickly. I might not read everything that's on the slide. Okay, so step one is to uh, meet with a uh, fertility provider uh, to test and understand your fertility, learn about the egg freezing process, and learn about the cost. Step two is to make the decision if the egg freezing is right for you. Uh, step three is to prep. Uh, this may involve starting a birth control pill, uh, you know, it involves ordering the medications, uh, confirming that you have um, completed the all the pre-cycle testing, learn how to administer injections, sign consents, ask questions, schedule uh, office monitoring appearance, I'm sorry, appointments, not appearance. Well, appointments and appearances, they could be the same thing. Okay, step four is ovarian stimulation. Uh, so injectable medications begin. This takes approximately nine to 12 days. Uh, and there are several quick ultrasounds and uh, blood draws to check on uh, the ovaries. How are you guys doing out there? Okay, I'm going back to the slide. Step five is egg retrieval. Uh, eggs gent are gently removed from the ovary under uh, light anesthesia. Uh, this usually occurs uh, in the clinic for about two hours uh, and a woman should arrange a ride home. Step six is the egg freezing. Uh, embryologists uh, freezes, freeze the eggs uh, 
the same day as the egg retrieval. Uh, and the focus is on recovery. And then step seven is the follow-up appointment. So uh, you meet with the doctor to discuss what went well, were there any surprises, uh, your chances of success, uh, how to use the eggs if you need them. And then finally, do you need another cycle to meet uh, family building goals? Okay. And that right there is interesting because today, what is a family? What does what does family mean across the board today? Are there any comments uh, on this? I know that was a lot. That was a lot. I mean, I, I'm not an expert on this. So uh, the beauty of this channel uh, there's a lot of uh, esoteric information and a lot of uh, there are a lot of esoteric words and terms used uh, but i'm learning along with you guys uh, as i go uh, along on this channel so a lot of these topics are new for me uh, so i'm learning about them for the very first time are there any comments in the chat on any of this eventually eventually I'm going to do the um, the artificial womb technology. I don't know if the master teacher has done that yet, but eventually we will visit the artificial womb technology because that's that's next. At that point, uh, you won't need you probably won't need any of this. You'll be able to be able to take the eggs, put them in a uh, an incubator of some sort, put them with the sperm, and then then just ha let them grow in some sort of incubator. But that one, yeah, that one, that one's next in this series, unless there's a reason to revisit this. Uh, if you guys have no thoughts or no comments on any of this, then I will go ahead and wrap uh, the stream up. Yeah. I mean, does any of this uh, alarm you? Does, does any of this uh, make you scratch your head when you see people talking about it? Uh, do you think this is a good technology to have? The ability to freeze down eggs and then unthaw them when they're when they're needed. I was thinking earlier today that uh, we as humans, we are completely taking over, well, we're taking over certain parts of mother nature. I don't, I don't know uh, that depending upon your spiritual or your uh, beliefs in the world, I don't know that the creator that's if you, if you believe in a creator uh, ever intended for us to do this uh, with our, um, our uh, uh, reproductive uh, capacities. I don't know if uh, artificial wound technology was ever, uh, if we were ever intended to do these things, but we're doing them. But hey, were we ever intended to go to outer space? Were we ever intended to have um, gender reassignments? Were we ever intended to have an internet? I don't know, but it's it's an interesting time, and these are very uh, unprecedented times that we're living through. Uh, if you're just coming in, please hit that like button. I'm pretty much done. I covered a lot of information here. Uh, I know it's kind of People want to be entertained. So when I read things, some people get bored and they leave. Uh, but there was so much here. I'll probably um, cut this up and uh, upload shorts here on Instagram and on my Facebook. I think I'm very, very careful 
about what I share with my Facebook network uh, these days because a lot of people over there don't know that any of this is going on. So when they see things from YouTube, for some people, there's this shock. Uh, so I'm very conscious about sharing stuff over there. But this is something, yeah, I mean, it's it's not, this has been around for a little while. So, but I will cut this up into shorts because of the the uh, the amount of information that I shared. Uh, Chris, well, Chaos says, no one wants frozen eggs. Well, chaos, someone does. Uh, Chris says, I think it's good for the individuals who need it due to health concerns. I agree. So, so if my coworker, for example, she had breast cancer uh, and they had their second child. So I don't, well, I wouldn't have pried so much into her business to say, hey, did you guys use the frozen eggs or did you just make some more naturally? I wouldn't have, I would I wouldn't have done that, but I know that she survived the breast cancer and they had a second child. So it it worked out for them in total. All right, everyone, I think I'm gonna yeah, I think I'm going to wrap this one up. I apologize uh, to the people who were uh, expecting this to start at 730. There was the potential for me to have to run out the door somewhere. So I just uh, I was facing either starting the stream much later than 730. And I have uh, the last day of a training in the morning or doing it on Saturday morning and then doing my other stream at 3.30. So it's not easy to do double headers. So I decided to just course correct and do the stream earlier. But uh, please take a look. If you're coming in late, please take a look at what I presented uh, because, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a fascinating procedure. There are reasons why uh, people are doing this. Uh, and there are costs associated with this. So is it worth the cost? I think that's something everybody has to ask themselves. I'm gonna wrap this up. Um, let me close these windows out. Thank you to Chris and Chaos and CR Frank and Sheed and everybody who came through and hung out in the chat live. Thank you to, I wanna, I wanna thank uh, K Business Podcast. Thank you for stopping through. I'm not familiar with you. I don't know if you're one of Sheed's people. But thank you for uh, stopping through. Most of you know that uh, I am a, uh, a writer. Before I get into that spiel, this is something that's going on now. I mean, the technique is not new, but I think it's becoming more widespread throughout society. So if you know someone who's interested in this, uh, please consider sharing this stream. If, if you know someone who's just heard about this for the first time and they watched Chantel Simone or someone else, and they, they just heard about this and like, they're like, ooh, what is that? What, what is egg freezing and why are women doing it? Please uh, do me a favor and share the link. I went over the, the technique. I went over the um, the reasons why it's used, and I went over the costs. So, please consider using this as a reference. All right, um, you guys know that I'm a writer. This is my newsletter. Uh, there is a, a a two paragraph greeting there, and there's a subscription button at the bottom there. You just uh, enter in your email address, and then Boom, you're part of my email list. I'm always looking for more names here as well. And uh, I'm actually prepping the January newsletter uh, right now. I think it's gonna have something to do with the training that I'm taking at work. I've taken, I'm taking a leadership training and we, we've done the Myers-Briggs assessment. I think some of you may be familiar with that. Uh, we've done a, a number of personal assessments, and then, you know, you relate that back to your, your day job. So I've learned some really interesting things about myself, and I think that's going to be 
the uh, the focus of this month's newsletter. Who are you? What are your attributes? Uh, and where do you belong? Floyd Holt says, I met too many women in their 40s and late 30s freezing their eggs. Uh, some lost their eggs due to being laid off and couldn't pay the, the monthly storage fee. You know, that that that's got to be a concern for this if you're going to go this route. It costs money to have the procedure done, and it costs money to, to store the eggs and to harvest the eggs and store the eggs and uh, to maintain the eggs uh, annually. And then it costs money to unthaw the eggs uh, for use. So if you're thinking about doing this, there's a price tag attached. So thank you for sharing that. <clears throat> Floyd Holt. Okay. I think that's it. I think I'll wrap this up here. Just like I um I kind of um bounced off um over on my original channel, I uh, read an article which was very, very popular called uh The Rise of the Useless Class. And I used that, I kind of bounced that off of uh, my interview with Dr. Patrick Dix. So I might read something. Uh, over or I might present something over on my original channel to bounce off this one though this is a uh, a pretty testy subject so I might just kind of I might just not do it I'll give it some thought but this is a something that's impacting a lot of people uh Floyd says yeah just like I read It's uh, 500 to $1,500 a month. Uh, it's a 500 to $1,500 a month payment for storage of eggs. So it's a mortgage, it's a, it's a, it's a rent payment. It's a mortgage payment on the high end. Yeah, that's right. And Floyd also says, uh, don't forget uh, inflation could increase the fees. Yeah, the fees on everything are going up now. Car insurance, cable, internet, uh, energy, utilities, everything. The fees are going up on everything. Okay. All right, Floyd, you keep you keep commenting here. I need to wrap this up. Let me make sure everybody is wrenched. Chris, I'm going to give you a wrench. I'm going to give Floyd a wrench. I don't really have a lot of trolls over here. This channel isn't that popular, but for the folks who regularly come and patronize and hang out in the chat, I'm going to give wrenches as a, a as a thank you and a sign of respect. So, Chris, you have a wrench. Uh, Floyd, I'm, I'm going to give you a wrench. Chaos, you already have a wrench. Sheed's got a wrench. CR Frank has a wrench. Uh, let's see. Yeah, chaos, a lot of those, well, a lot of things may be coming to a screeching halt soon. Uh, if 2020 is going to turn, I'm sorry, if 2023 is going to end up being the brutal year that it's been forecasted to be, a lot of things are going to come to a screeching halt. All right. All right, everyone. Uh, I'm going to wrap this stream up. Thank you to those of you who came out and uh, hung out in the chat. Uh, thank you to all of those of you who hopped in and hopped out. And thank you to all those of you who uh, hit that like button. Uh, if you're new to the channel, if you're watching this on the playback, please like, share, uh, and subscribe. If you want to donate something to the channel, that information is below in the description box. Okay, my cash app my Cash App and my PayPal. Uh, and uh, with that, I'm going to wrap up. Uh, look out for the next one. Again, 
yeah, I'm, I'm going to cover a lot of topics this year. Uh, I may come back to this. Uh, I want to have Dr. Dix come back to talk about automation uh, and AI and machine learning. Uh, and I, I want to uh, investigate this climate business. Uh, the, the, the videos I've been watching and uh, the papers that I need to read and that I want to read, uh, all, of, all of this is very, very fascinating stuff. So look out for that type of content uh, coming up. Uh, this year in 2023. All right, everyone. Enjoy uh, the rest of your Thursday night. Uh, as always, remember that your attitude uh, determines your altitude. Uh, and always do your best. Take care, and I will talk to you the next time. Bye-bye.